Welcome to my allotment. Today I'm going to be taking you around my allotment to show you what I'm doing today. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, so you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year so you can see what I'm getting up to and things that could help you grow better. So starting off, I'm going to be harvesting some courgettes. Now my courgettes seem to take forever to produce much this year. Fortunately, my father-in-laws were ahead of mine, so he's been giving me some of his. So his will probably finish earlier than mine, so I'll have to share some of mine with him, but that's fine. So as you can see, you've got plenty of courgettes now. Now people ask, when do I harvest a courgette? Well, when it's big enough to pick, basically. So I'm going to be pulling that one off. Some people harvest them quite small like that, but I prefer to let them to get a little bit bigger. So I have to bear in mind, I probably won't be up here for a couple of days. If I left that any longer, that might get too big. And it, you can let the fruits get bigger, but what that does, sometimes does, it stops production of more or it slows it down. So I want as many as I can have so I can use them in my recipes and also share them with friends and family. So I've got various varieties here. That one's Black Beauty. So now I label everything up because I often can't remember what I've planted. If I pull that label out, I can tell you what this one is as well. This one is called Lebanese courgette. So I'm going to be picking some of these. As you can see, they've got quite big, but that's absolutely fine. Some people like so some people like them bigger, some people like them smaller. So I'm pulling ones off that I think will be too big in a few days' time. And I've already got a few friends that have been putting putting hints out to have a few. I've got some lovely round courgettes as well, which just make a little bit of a difference. So you've got, I've got three different colours here. I've got some dark green, some mild green, and then also some stripey. I've also got some yellow ones coming on, but they've not come to fruition yet, but I will be getting those. And some that almost look like round flying saucers. So, but again, they're a little bit behind, so I haven't got any of those. So something I'm going to do today is I'm going to feed my courgettes and squashes. Because as you can see, some of them are doing really, really well and some of them not so much. Now some of them, it's because they were planted a little bit later, but I just want to give them a bit of a boost. Now I, I feed them with an organic plant feed, feed um, that I use a lot, which I will put in the description. You can use it for lots of your different fruits and vegetables. And also I do feed it with a comfrey feed, so I kind of like alternate between the two. And I find that balance works really, really well. So I've got, you obviously have to look on the instructions on, on the bottle, but mine, I know that I need five capfuls in this one to feed them. Looks a bit treacly, almost a bit marmite -y. Um but it works really, really well on the plants. I've used this for many, many, many years and it just works. So why would I not keep on using it? That's why I recommend it. And obviously a stick to mix it all in together. Now when you water, and pretty much when you water any plant, you shouldn't water over the plants because that can damage them. So you must water at the very base. Try not to get it on the leaves. If the odd bit splashes on, so be it, but just do the best you can to water at the base and this will give them a nice boost. I will be using this feed on some of my other plants that I think need a little bit of a kick, in particular my sweet corn, which they're looking like they're not coming on as, as quickly as I would like them to. So I fed my courgette squashes and pumpkins. I put canes in so I know where to water them because like I said you don't want to put it on the plant and as they get bigger sometimes it's hard to work out where the base of the plant is. So if you put a cane in then that shows you where you need to water when they get quite quite big. So one of my um, viewers also said about covering with a bottle, really handy tip so you don't catch yourself on it, you know you could catch yourself at your arm or your eye or something, it's just a good safety measure there. So I'm going to take you around and show you what I'm doing around the allotment today and I'm going to dig one of my first earlies just to see how they're getting on and we're going to take a look at the cabbages and the broad beans and also my raspberries so you can see how I'm doing. Hopefully I'll get some potatoes which would be really awesome. So if we move up to the raspberries. Now I pick these every other day if I can because they come on so quickly and if you don't they'll just drop off and waste. So they're not the kind of thing that you can leave and pick at a later date. As soon as they're ripe, you really do need to get them off. So I always bring up containers. I've always got a store of containers and because otherwise you forget to bring them up is what I find. So you just literally pick off the ones that are the most ripe. 
Now, if like me, you're planning on doing jam, I'll also pick off the ones that aren't quite so ripe because they don't all have to be really, really ripe. Um, and if you can't get up here every other day, you'll find that you'll lose some if you don't. Um, so it's really your choice what you do in that regard. While one like that would be a little bit too sharp to eat, um, it'd be fine to put in jam, but you wouldn't pick them all off like that. Um, you'd want most of them to be ripe. It's just a few not quite so ripe, doesn't matter. So I'm planning on making jam and I often do a mixture of rhubarb and raspberries. So I do a blend. I've done that for many years, works really well for me. I obviously just like eating them on their own on my porridge, but there are lots of other things. You can put them in gin, various puddings with meringues. So smoothies, another really good way. I freeze them and then get a handful at a time and put them in my smoothies. So you, you, know, you can never have too many raspberries. And obviously a very easy thing to give away. If we move round to my cabbages, we can see how they're getting on. So they're doing really well. So to test whether a cabbage is ready to pick, they needed to have heart heartened up. So if I lift off the, um, the netting so you can see. So that one there is starting to hearten up. Now, I could pick that now, um, or I could wait for it to hearten up a little bit more. The reason I say I could pick that now is because I often find if you wait for them to harden up fully they all will be quite a way on and you'll never get through them quick enough so I, I probably will pull that one in the next week or two but I've already got some cabbage in my fridge so I'm not going to pull it today so I'm going to cover it back up really important you keep these covered because of the birds and also the white cabbage butterfly um, so keep those covered as we move around to the kale, same thing there. That's all doing really, really well. You can easily harvest some of that. But again, keep it covered for the same reason. The chard doesn't get affected by the white cabbage butterfly. Oh, I don't find it does. The only reason I've got a bit of cover over it is just to stop the birds from attacking it, which I'm probably gonna take off quite soon because now that the chard's more established, the birds probably won't have a go at it. So as we move down, my sweet corn still isn't picking up quite at the rate I would hope it to. So I'm going to feed that with some of that feed that I've got. Um, some of them are starting to, to come on. So yeah, definitely want to be feeding that. And I would give it a bit of a feed anyway, even if it was looking good. So As we move down, I don't know if you remember that the leeks really suffered from the birds having a go at them, but they're really starting to fill out. Now, while I've lost a few, there's still plenty there and they are definitely coming on and the leaves are starting to fill out. They often do look a little bit poorly when you first put them out, um, but don't let it put you off. If it was dry, you'd water them. It's been raining massively here, so they've definitely had enough water and the onions are doing well. And like I've said before, if you see that any that are going to seed on an onion, you just nip it off like that. And my broad beans, I've had a small harvest off those. Loads of bloom and beans that are just starting to come on. And again, you can harvest the beans a little bit smaller, but you've got to make sure you can feel a pod in there. But I'm going to let mine come on a little bit more and let them fill out a little bit more before I pick any. Let's move over to my potatoes and see whether I've got any. See whether they're... You know, the only thing you can do with potatoes is to dig them and just see what you've got underground. Until you take a look, you, you have no idea really. So that's quite exciting. So let me get my fork. So the variety of first earlies I planted were Casablanca. I planted them at the very beginning of April. Now, generally speaking, they're ready to dig in June or July. So we were at the beginning of July. So we've got some blooms forming. So hopefully these are ready. But like I said, the only way you can really tell is if you dig one. So. Let's, I've gone for one that looks a little bit bigger and a bit more mature. So let's have a look, see what we've got in here. Oh yes, so that's, that looks good to me. So, be careful when you're digging them, that you don't do what I just did. You will get the odd one that does get a fork through it. 
very important you eat that one first. But yeah, we've got potatoes, which is exactly what we're after. So let's have a little bit more of the dig. I see them there. Sometimes it's better off to have a pair of gloves on and to rummage around in the ground once you've loosened the soil because it is easy to stick a fork back through, which is a really big thing to, to think about when you're doing it. You know, once you've loosened the soil, if you can rub your fingers through it, it can be a much better way of getting the potatoes out because you don't, you don't want to damage them if you can help it, but you will get the odd one. But when you dig them, you try and, you try and dig to the side of the plant, not right through the middle. And I say that and I've managed to knock another one, but there you go. another one so, not the biggest harvest for one potato but your first earlies you often don't get such a heavy weight so I can dig more of those if I want to they're not massive I could leave them a bit longer if I wanted to but it's nice to have some of your own potatoes that's why you grow your first earlies because they're the tastiest ones of all so I hope that's helped you know when to dig your potatoes because I hear a lot of people online questioning whether that's the case i'll probably dig one other plant today and with these i literally dig what i need so i'll dig a couple of plants and then when i need some more i'll come back and dig a few more and lastly my dahlias as you can see loads of little blooms on them and they've actually started to come out so i can start cutting some of these and taking them home so you only cut them when they actually come out of bloom so that's something that really brightens up my house and one of the things that I started doing during lockdown to brighten up my garden and also to give us gifts to people to brighten up their day. So I really hope that's given you lots of helpful hints and tips. And if you've got any questions or queries, as ever, please do ask and we will do our best to help you.